that this is not a good situation. And this is why I don't want to be stuck in this situation. You know? And then the important verses in the Bhagavad Gita, up till now we have seen one meter, which is called Anushtuk. How does it go? Na 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 This is Anushtu. The tune is not Anushtu. We are 16, yeah. Anushtu can be chanted in another tune also. Don't get confused with this tune. You know, because don't think this is the only tune. Because otherwise you will not, if you, you cannot recognize the meter by the tune. That is not a very good uh, way. You have to recognize the meter with a number of syllables and which is guru, you know, fat and which is thin, laghu. Fat, you know, that I am big and dactyl. That's the whole thing. Guru means say long and then laghu, short. So long, short, long, short, 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 long, like this. It, the, 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 there are some... Uh, permutations and combinations which make it qualified by uh, for Anushtup. You know, Anushtup can be sung in other ways also. Like what? Um, like this, uh, what is that? Usually we say, Dharma Kshetre Kuru Kshetre. But it, it can be in another way also. Like, uh, it's hard when you have already <laughs> this in your mind, the other one doesn't come easily. <laughs> Ah, Sama Veta, you No, it's the same one. <laughs> no, no, that's the same one. It's just a different pitch, that's all. Yeah. Same. It's the same. Same. Same as above. I'll, I'll tell you. Give me, give me one second. I'll, I'll. Um, and don't feed me the same things. Let me, let me. Give me one second. Dharma Kshetre, Kuru Kshetre, Samaveta, Yuyutsavaha, Mamakav, Pandava, Shaiva, Kimakarvata, Sanjaya. <laughs> so that is the difference. So, but still, even though it has another tune, it's the same. Yeah. So this, it has 16, 8 in each. Uh, 8, 8, 8, 8. This is the thing. So, one fourth is 8. Another fourth is eight, so one line has sixteen syllables. This one has another sixteen at the bottom, two lines. Now we are coming to a uh, meter called Trishthup. Trishthup has twelve syllables, four lines of twelve syllables, and so it's of course the tune will be slightly different, and that also has many tunes. And all the important verses, so that if you are napping, this is the time to wake up. <laughs> because it's an important verse. Why is it important? Because he is telling the reasons why he cannot fight. Of course, he has been telling from chapter 1, but this is slightly different. And it's also, it's important for three reasons. He is telling the reason why he cannot fight is directly connected to not just his sympathy for war and all these things, is directly connected to his connection with the people on the other side and he is feeling very sad about uh, what it has come to that all these worshipful people have to be killed and he has to live with the guilt. He's going to talk about that. That's why it's in Trishthub. The second reason it's in Trishthub is that he recognizes that his sorrow and feelings of misery which have come out in this battlefield will not go away. Mm. That they have mm. nothing to do with this battlefield. Mm. This is a very big re realization. Mm. Yeah. That even if he is victorious, he, it's not going to go away. Mm. You know? It's not that, you know, one can argue, and one has, some people have argued that, oh, that's just because, um, what is that? The, the war is going to leave such an indelible mark on him that he cannot do this, but that's not it. He recognizes that the source of so sorrow is centered on himself, not on the war, not on the prospect of killing. The prospect of the war and killing is bringing out a, a, an old, tired sorrow that doesn't seem to be going away. That's why it's in this. And finally he understands that 
the war doesn't matter anymore. It's all about the inner chaos, the inner war of the sorry self. You know, some sorrow, some sorry, the, the, the one who is this sad self. And he transcends the need for the war. And he doesn't tell Krishna, even though some people have, literalists have always interpreted Gita differently, like I told in the introduction. He doesn't tell Krishna, please tell me what to do. He doesn't tell that. He says, whatever is the most exalted goal, Shreyas, I want Shreyas. What is that for me? Guide me, I am your student. So here a declaration of Shishyatvam is there. That is why also it's in, it's in this uh, meter, Trishthup meter. So we'll chant all of them. Guru Nahatva Hi Mahanubhavan Guru Nahatva Hi Mahanubhavan Shreyo Bhoktum Bhaikshyam Api Haloke Shreyo Bhoktum Bhaikshyam Api Haloke Hatvartha Kamans to Guru Nihaiva ಭುಂಜೀಯೋಗಾನ್ರುಧಿರಪ್ರದಿಗ್ಧಾನ್ಜೀಯೋಗಾನ್ರುಧಿರಪ್ರದಿಗ್ಧಾನ್ಜೈ
uh, gray hairs in vain. They did not earn their wrinkles in vain. And you know, they have something to show for it. They, they are wise. And so these highly intelligent and wise role models, without killing, there must be a way out. And I think I have found it. I see a light at the end of the tunnel here, if I go my way. So, Shreya Hasyat, better it is. Here the word Shreyas doesn't mean moksha, just moksha from the war. So this seems to be a better alternative than killing these gurus, who are highly exalted people, you know. And what does he say? Shreya, better it is, you know. Bhoktum bhaikshyam api iha loke, iha loke, asmin loke, in this world, it is better to go away somewhere and quietly leave the situation that's calling you to engage in this adharmic war. He doesn't see it as a war of dharma. He sees it as a war of adharma on part of himself. So better it is than to fight this adharmic war. What should I do? I should go away somewhere. Why can't I just go back home and sit down? Because the people will come after him with sticks and stones and break his bones. That's what he knows they will do. Or they will spit at him. So he knows that there is no possibility of retreat. You know, you cannot retreat. We have talked about this. And so what can you do? There is a way out in the Indian culture. Ah, everybody is looking very happy. But... <laughs> This is when everyone starts to look very happy. Oh, that alternative is there. It is starting to look very good. And the worse the life goes, that alternative starts to shine. And for Arjuna, it becomes a fixation. Yeah, yeah. Sannyasa holic, he has become starting now. And he cannot get this off of my mind, off his mind. He just keeps, he says, I can't see any other way. Look, and he's very intelligent, highly intelligent. You know, if he was an American, he would have said, I'll become a hobo, you know. Yeah, I'll just go and I'll go, uh, what is that, what do they do, train hopping. I'll keep going train hopping and uh, sleep on some hay and uh, get up and then, you know, uh, no need to brush teeth and get on another train. And, you know, this is how I lead a vagabond life, you know, because in this country there is no slot for what a sadhu is, you know. You can say monk, but what is that? You know, they don't know monk. They know monkey, but they don't. <laughs> they don't know monk. You know, and if they ask things like, "Do you have a job?" What What are you supposed to say? No. I mean, if you're being truthful, you say, "No, you don't have a job." Oh, are you independently wealthy then? No. <laughs> you don't have a job. You're not independently wealthy. And then, uh, so what do you really do? Oh, you teach. Oh, so you teach for a living? No, not for a living. <laughs> and uh, it's very confusing. Oh, nice orange. Everyone wants to touch the clothes. Nice orange, you know. And then, uh, and then, you know, so you, this is your favorite color. And <laughs> just because it's an airport and you don't want to have a long conversation, what do you say? Yes, it's my favorite color. <laughs> It's not a lie, but it's also no need to get into it. It's my favorite color, you know. And this is what they do. If there's a customs inspe inspection, they will always say, Oh, you like orange. <laughs> yes, that's what that lady said, you know. You like orange. And uh, that is what it was. And, you know, I, I, I was bringing things for Lord Dakshinamurti. And there was some... Uh, metal in the a suitcase. This was a couple of years ago or something like that. When I, uh, when I went, one time I was bringing things and uh, they said, oh, can we just look? I said, okay, look. And they said, oh, you, you must love orange. <laughs> yes. You know, so what do you say? There is no place here. In India, if, if, do you have a job? No. Do you have a wife, a husband? No. Do you have children? No. Oh, are you a sadhu? Oh. The, there is a slot there. And so he is trying to think out of the box. Because obviously, being a prince, they would have entertained lots of sadhus, they would have given bhiksha, sadhus would have visited, you know, asking for a piece of land or uh, inviting them to some yajna, or uh, all the sadhus would have come to attend the yajna or something, you know. And sometimes the sadhus are invited and given gifts. So all these things he would have seen. 
and uh, they don't come in between they only come when they are invited and they take their gift and go away they are not you know um, they, they are not a permanent fixture so he knows they must be living in some cave or on a mountain top somewhere and he never gave them much thought because he was uh, he was a prince that was not his calling it was very clear that's not his calling at all his calling is to defend the the, the country to rule it well to administer it and defend it from enemies this is his calling and also in the forest he lived for 12 13 years there also he would have encountered rishis sadhus and uh, various hairs tied in various kinds of knots and various beards with of different lengths he would have encountered <laughs> yeah from goatee to you know full full you know beard he would have uh, encountered and uh, there also he, he was not intrigued he was not keen to join their ranks but he knew they existed suddenly their lifestyle is starting to look very good because this he cannot get over so he gets into this thing of aha i think i have found the correct solution to my situation guru nahatva so this has got so many this this is a very good thing because it doesn't call the killing of the gurus who are exalted souls and i am not disappointing anybody because to become a sadhu is a highly wonderful thing you know no but nobody can uh, i have i have a diplomatic immunity against all the stone throwing other go soldiers and uh, foot soldiers and elephant uh, you know people all these things i have diplomatic uh, spiritual immunity and what is this spiritual immunity i'm a card carrying sadhu <laughs> you know and that means what that means there is an option in the society and this is a very beautiful thing that the gita is centered around these two options there is an option in the society to be able to give up everything and to just be focused on this on the teaching on the knowledge and so he he is not talking about the knowledge yet but the lifestyle has started to really attract him you know and unfortunately a number of uh, people take up sanyasa without knowing what it is the lifestyle attracts perhaps there is some previous vasana perhaps there is something going on there you know that reminds them of something or the other so the lifestyle becomes very very alluring the lifestyle is not is just a dress correct not literally but just a dress like we, like you wear a dress it's just a trapping you know the lifestyle is an external um thing that is a means not an end this arjuna doesn't know this arjuna doesn't know that it's a means to gain the end which you can gain right now right here you don't have to adopt that lifestyle in order to gain this end what matters is the in the end is the end not the means so the the, the means are already there the means are given one is to that you are obliged by the vidya the of karma yoga dharma shastra by the vidya of dharma shastra which prescribes karma yoga which is going to be discussed in this chapter in detail that you are obliged to do what you need to be done what needs to be done you are supposed to do you are supposed to do what is correct what is appropriate and what needs to be done by you what is your share of the work and you you are doing that without complaint and uh, without rancor and at and also with uh, with prayerfully with a prayerful way caringly yeah with care not careless you know you can do a certain thing in the same way you can throw things around or you can keep them neatly you know so the keeping them neatly there is already it becomes an act of prayer because you have taken the care that care becomes shraddha there and so you do everything with shraddha and then what and whatever you do the results of that you know are not in your hands so you learn to receive things with a gladness of heart with a prasad buddhi which means gladness of heart with a glad uh, sense of acceptance this is what is you know this is what you have to do and then at the same time you are also gaining this teaching it's not that you should just not study you are studying at the same time and while you are getting the emotional maturity because really speaking the lifestyle is incumbent upon 
how mature one is and if one is mature enough to give up everything and to go away and not you know think about the morrow then that is obviously the way to go otherwise this is a better way to go as arjuna is going to discover but in the meanwhile he doesn't know all this he doesn't know why to give up everything so that one can sit and contemplate on one's own nature and one can sit and learn about one's own nature uh, uh, as the case might be he doesn't know that this is the the point he thinks that i'll just sit and eat bananas and that's it and uh, somebody will give me bhiksha no problem you know all you have to do is extend the begging bowl and something will be dropped in them swaha that's all you know and uh, this is what it is you get a special bhiksha bowl and you take that <laughs> it has got a handle in a uh, nice you take that and then you know it comes in various sizes for different stomachs and <laughs> different stomach sizes and you buy one and you keep it and then that's all you go you wash it and then you collect everything and then come back and then you eat it and then the thing is you don't know what for this lifestyle is and if you're not ready for lifestyle this lifestyle i tell you killing the gurus and the and the elders is sounding a lot better than the misery of the one who is unprepared for this lifestyle lifestyle and this is what he's going to be told in chapter 5 sanyasastu mahabaho dukham aptum ayogatah yoga yukto munir brahma na chirena adhigachhati dukham aptum sanyasa is very difficult to gain ayogatah the for the one who is uh, without karma yoga ayoga means not the one who has not done yoga <laughs> yoga here means karma yoga for the one untrained in karma yoga the one who has not learned to manage ragadveshas sanyaha sanyasah tu sanyasastu sanyasa is indeed you know dukham aptum very difficult to accomplish sanyasa lifestyle itself should be accomplished and is a very difficult lifestyle to accomplish you know what are you going to do the whole day first tell me that you know <laughs> you know when suddenly there is nothing to do what you know and people tell me this all the time sometimes i get phone calls and emails i finish work 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock on friday this is what they tell me and then saturday i'm so happy i say thank god there is nobody to bother me nobody is emailing me about oh this needs to be get i mean work emails no say, saying this needs to be done that needs to be done go here go there go do this do that nobody is bothering me there is nothing to do i can sleep in i can get up whenever i want i can i need not take a bath or i can take a bath and i can have a good morning not worrying about anything there is no fixed time for anything you know i can do whatever i want you know then you know that uh, the day goes and after half of the saturday goes then there is a vague kind of unease a vague kind of disease what now what now what now am i there yet am i there yet what's to happen now then you busy yourself because some saturday evening program you make and you do some things and uh, go shopping and cleaning and cooking and whatever it is you do and then by sunday you just want to go back to work this is what people tell me by sunday that restlessness comes up so this is in one weekend even saturday sunday is too much to live with yourself imagine a whole life with when every day is saturday and every other day is sunday then <laughs> what are you going to do you know and so therefore you have to be ready for this you have to be ready to be contented with who you are but obviously he doesn't know all this he just sees the lifestyle and mistakes that for the end and he says he knows it's not an easy uh, lifestyle to live in a in a cave you know without uh, heating where you, you don't have to press a button and then heat comes on that's not what this cave is like and uh, and then he has to you know what should i say negotiate with the bats which side he is going to sleep in and all these things are there there will be other occupy occupants of the cave spiders bats etc so he has when they came first correct this is in fact their ancestral property they have been there for generations so he is the new newbie here yeah he is the newcomer so he has to just sort of say 
you know, uh, I give Abhaya, I, I give you the gift of life, I'm not going to have you for dinner, promise, give me a little place to sleep in. And the snakes say, okay, not rope snakes, real snakes. They say, all right, all right, you can have this corner, we won't bother you. So it's all a negotiation. He knows it's not easy, but the situation in which he is, he's, it's so dire according to him that he'd rather think about that. The road to Rishikesh, he's already he's paving the road mentally because he's going to walk on it. It's a few days walk, he will reach there, he knows. So, Shreyaha, Bhoktum Bhaikshyam, it is better to live. Ihaloke, in this world, rather than killing one teachers, it's better to live a life of arms. You know, who are the people who lives on arms? Householders. No? Sure? Sanyasis. Yeah, sannyasis. And then brahmacharis, so the people who go to Gurukula. Gurukula means the Guru is living on arms, so what are you going to live on? <laughs> so by extension, the student is, you know, the student is living, you know, also on arms because the Guru is living on the, off the arms. So this is how in a, it's very nice to see if you go to some of the traditional Gurukulas that even today where the children are taught the recitation of the Vedas, the arms come, people come to offer the arms. For, it's a big plate, you know, and, the, the, and they, they will put so much on the plate, <laughs> so much they'll keep serving. And I was intrigued because this was a Veda, Veda Pathashala where uh, the, the children are not learning Vedanta, they are, it's a Veda recital uh, Gurukulam, small, small children go and they're all sitting there and this was somewhere in Rishikesh only I had gone and then I was surprised why this uh, teacher is not saying enough, you know, usually you say enough, you know, he, as soon as you see the, the, <laughs> the spoon coming to your plate, you say enough, <laughs> but here, he was pilot on, pilot on, and he had soon, very soon, he had a mound of uh, upma, nice little, you know, it looked like as big as a good sized anthill. And then uh, the things that went with it, two, three kinds of, you know, red chutney, green chutney, yellow chutney, and that was also, you know, you know, at least a quart each. And then there was some other, you know, nuts, uh, you know, fried, uh, roasted, what are they called? The peanuts, brown nuts. Mm -hmm and uh, some other things and some other, one more thing was there. Everything he kept on saying, yes, and the students are all sitting around. It was not a big one, eight, you know, six to eight students, maybe eight young fellows. And so the guru ate and then he pushed the plate towards them and they all fell on the, that's why he didn't say no. Ah, because it's for all of them he's accepting. And it's very sweet to see. So the guru finishes eating and then pushes the plate towards the students. This is how it was done traditionally. And everybody just eats off of that. So, so a brahmachari is, lives off of arms because the guru lives off of arms. And so the brahmachari is entitled to take arms. So in the, in the thread ceremony, which is the initiation of the child into the Vedas, um, you know, he first asks for arms from the mother. Yeah, he, he doesn't call her mom anymore. He says, Bhavati, Bhikshan Dehi. It's a very beautiful thing. Where the mother is becomes the bhiksha giver, the first bhiksha giver. So it is an encouragement for the child to not to to, to grow up a little and not look at the mother as you know as that dysfunctional connection. That was okay because he was a child and now the child is growing up. So you you are taught to look upon the parents with a little more objectivity. And, and, the, and the, in fact, the parents need it more. The children are fine. <laughs> so the mother becomes the bhiksha giver. Yeah. So she dresses up in a nice sari and comes and her sari, this, the, 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 the angavastram of the sari is filled with rice and all the goodies and a set of clothes for the, the, this uh, newly shorn boy, <laughs> you know. And then with all her love, she, and she learns to love him objectively. So she gives the rice and the coconut and a new set of clothes she gives uh, to the child. And the child takes her blessings and says, you, you are my first guru. And from you I'm getting this very touching to see, when you know what is what, mm -hmm. to see the Upanayana ceremony, Upanayanam taking the child close to itself, to the Veda, that is what it is. And to see this thread ceremony, it is just so beautiful. You don't get bored, it is beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
is just a gorgeous thing in the culture. It is so fantastic. And so that child who is initiated into the Vedas can go and ask for bhiksha. And, and the sannyasi can ask for bhiksha. Where, which category does Arjuna fall under? <laughs> huh? He is too old to be a brahmachari. Yeah. You know, sometimes you hear these news items that this 45-year-old woman, recently she was found out, uh, dressed up in pigtails, not on Halloween, just on every day she used to do this, dressed up in, uh, what are they, pigtails, yeah, in pigtails, and uh, wore as, you know, the kinds of clothes that uh, teenagers wear, and enrolled herself, she went to a new town, enrolled herself in middle school, and was... Uh, having classmates and nobody knew. I mean, only la later people found out. She had children the age that of, you know, teenage children. I think the children found out and so there is some problem. Anyway, so, <laughs> so you see, the, why am I telling this? Because Arjuna, it is too late for him to enroll into Veda Patishala. <laughs> He can't go over Upanayar. He is a father, he is a grandfather, he has got children and grandchildren. He, he cannot go back to becoming a student and say Bhavati Bhikshan Dehi. Correct? Yeah. And is he a sadhu? No. He is a sadhu. Don't. He is not a sadhu. And so therefore what? He cannot do what the sadhus do. He cannot, you know, just say that I can leave everything. And sadhus are notorious for that, you know. They don't have to go through with anything. Yeah, and they can leave anything at any time. And uh, they may start something to inspire people and then, you know, have them take it over. That is what they do. And uh, so therefore what the sadhus are not obliged to be karma yogis. They, you know, they have already finished karma yoga, they have accomplished it and that's how now they are, they have, they are, uh, the, the society has uh, given them the, uh, the, the social and the religious sanction to not be a productive member. Yeah, because it, the society and the people in the society value their knowledge and value their pursuit of knowledge. That's why they're letting them be. And so, he doesn't know all this. He just says, I want to go become a sadhu now. It's better to go live a life of arms than do this. And then what? Because he also says, Hatva, you know, if, if I kill these people, a Hatva, this is better. No, he gives both the options. He says, this, I have found a way out because I cannot retreat and I cannot go forward. This, this, in the Hindu culture, this lot is fantastic. I'm going to take the, you know, fifth amendment here. Yeah. And I'm going to take this. I'm not going to go and do th this war because this is wonderful. The gurus are spared. The war is not there. There is no bloodshed. And I'm sitting there somewhere incognito living on Bhiksha and everything is fine, you know. And then what? He's, but he says, look at the other scenario. Hatva artha kaman, hatva gurun. So what, ha gurun ahatva, this is the scenario. But gurun hatva, having killed them, what happens? Artha kaman, gurun iha, ihaiva hatva, what happens? Rudira pradigdhan bhunjiya bhogyan. So he says, if I kill these gurus and win the war and get everything that I want, then what's going to happen is that my enjoyment of security and pleasure derived by the victory and the gain of this kingdom, you know, the victory gives me security as a war warrior and the kingdom gives me pleasure and security both. So my artha kama will be tainted forever with their blood. I will have a case of Lady Macbeth syndrome. Yeah, out, out, you spot. She said all night long she saw spots everywhere. Yeah, what kind of spots? Not Dalmatian spots. Yeah, she was and the mastermind in having her brother-in-law killed so that her husband could become the king. And she could not get rid of this guilt. Whole night, like a mad woman, she roamed the palace and wanting to keep on washing hands all the time because she felt like her hands were tainted in blood. So here, Arjuna also felt the same way. You know, there will be a victory celebration and then everybody will offer him cake 
you know what is the sanskrit word for quick cake quick huh? no no apupa <laughs> say it apupa cake so people will make apupa for this occasion yeah it's a, it's a nice cake made of rice flour and wheat and everything very nice so this apupa they will make and then you know and somebody will say here arjuna have a slice of apupa and then, uh, he will see it fro- the frosting will be made of the blood of drona and uh, bhishma he will see the blood in terms of drizzle the drizzle on the cake will be drenched in their blood and somebody will say here arjuna have a chakli what is chakli <laughs> actually the real word is chakri it it's a spiral it's a savory spiral dish burukku like that you know it's savory and it's spiral it's chakri you know i'm i'm talking of ancient snacks victory snacks and so here arjuna have a chakri that's why i didn't say murukku yeah, that's modern ancient have a chakri and what is he going to remember he is going to say oh this is just remembering the chakra vyuha in which my son was killed you know he is going to just see everything this whole he is going to be wearing red colored blood colored blood stained glasses everything he looks at everything they offer him to enjoy here is your palatial bed immediately he is going to remember drona and bhishma and the bed sheets are also full of blood you know their blood and his enjoyment every object of enjoyment from apupaha a for apupaha you know p for palace you know all these things are stained with blood every brick in the palace is made of blood this is what the whole thing is and he says my arthakama pursuits i will not be able to enjoy and then you know what he is saying without saying it he says this is a war of adharma not dharma so dharma is gone where is the dharma his dharma is lost he already made his case and arthakama i cannot enjoy so what is left for me you have to think according to the <coughs> things mentioned dharma artha kama what comes after ah mm. yeah mm. you don't say hat coat umbrella and sanyasa <laughs> <laughs> so you have to think in the same way so yeah you don't say orange apple and bandaid you know they, they don't go together <laughs> they don't go together so here what are we talking about the, the four pursuits in life so dharma i have pursued and it has eaten me up because this is a war of adharma and in this war dharma is lost to us and to the other generations so don't talk to me about dharma dharma is gone and then arthakama i cannot enjoy even if i have all the servants coming and bringing me apupaha and all these other things i cannot enjoy why because they are stained with the guilt and the hurt of having killed them so what else is left moksha i think i better go become a sanyasi this is what is very beautifully this verse is uh, crafted this whole mental state is extremely uh, beautiful so hatva guru nihaiva bunjiya bunjiya means i would i would enjoy bunjiya bhogan i would enjoy all the objects of en- enjoyment how would i enjoy them rudhira rudhira means blood pradigdhan soaked in blood everything is soaked in blood if he is given rasagulla what does he see you know he sees a blood syrup he doesn't see sugar syrup everything every artha kama he is, he just feels like vomiting at the sight of all the the pleasures of the palace he is just sick he is got jigupsa jigupsa means revulsion yeah you know and uh, he he is he is re- re- repulsed by all these objects of enjoyment and so the first verse says he uh, shows that he has got what is called jihasa vairagya that out of a tough situation better to stop wanting things and including wanting a solution because what's the point so let us move on he says and let us just go to rishikesh that way because dharma has disappointed me artha kama i cannot enjoy what else is left out of the fourfold human pursuit moksha <laughs> moksha <laughs> 
Yeah, he also includes moksha with sannyasa. That's the problem. Ah, hmm. that's why you keep saying sannyasa because he is equating moksha with sannyasa. Ah, this is his problem. A problem that does not leave him even until the end of chapter 18. You know, he, so he the problem rise, raises his head, its head in uh, chapter uh, three. He asks. If the point is to give up everything, why should I fight this war? And then, you know, then in chapter 5 he asks more brazenly. By this time he is a little more self-confident. And then in chapter 12 he is a little ashamed. So he asks it covertly and he depersonalizes the problem. You know, evam satata yukta ye bhaktastvam paryupasate. You know, he says, out of these people, who are your devotees? Which are better? Nirgun or Sagun? <laughs> Means those who see Brahman as form, less name, less, you know, less, less, limit, less, everything, and who don't worship a form, or those who worship a form, who are better? Because he's equating the first one with sannyasa, and then the other one with, uh, you know, the karma yoga. And then so he asks it in a very clever way. And then, you know, he asks again, you know, in the 18th chapter. I want to hear about Tyaga. What is Tyaga? How many types there are? What is the typology of renunciation? Explain renunciation, you know. And so the, the, he's fixated on sannyasa. He's not understanding the connection between moksha and himself, that he has to want moksha. And sannyasa is one of the lifestyles to gain moksha, not the only lifestyle. Ah. He thinks that the end is equal to sannyasa. The end is not sannyasa. And you know, and this is what he doesn't understand. So, did he look at all the words? Hatvartha kamans tu, hatva gurun tu, whereas tu, whereas gurun hatva, artha kaman. Bunjiya, I would enjoy the Artha Kama, Bhogan, the Bhogas centered on Artha and Kama, security and pleasure centered Bhogas, Bunjiya, I would enjoy. How? As though they are dipped in blood. Nacha etad vidmaha. And he says, I really do not know. We don't know. Katarat naha gariyaha. Katarat means which of the two options? Naha for us, gari yaha is better. And what are the two options? Yadva, should we, jayema, should we become victorious? Should we conquer them? Yadiva, naha, te, jaye yuhu. Other, or what is the other option? Either we are victorious or, hello, they are victorious over us. Either we conquer them or we are conquered by us. They conquer us. And I don't know which is better. Katarat nahagari yaha, which is better? You know, I don't know. And why do you not know? Ya neva hatva, killing whom? Na jiji visha asti. You know, jiji visha means what? Hmm? Hmm? Would want to live. Yes, jivitum icha. To desire to live. Jiji visha. See, always remember. Jignasa, Mumuksha, Jijivisha, yes, Pipasa, Bubuksha, all these are desiderative nouns. Desiderative nouns means desiring to live, desire for knowledge, desire for freedom, desire to drink, desire to eat. Chikirsha, what is Chikirsha? Desire to do kartumicha chikirsha. So all these are these these sha and sa nouns. They are called sun. They have the you know pratyaya called sun desiderative in the sense of desiderative. Except there are three words which are always used like that. Gup tij kit. Gup tij kit dhyo sun. You know kit dhya sun. There is one sutra. So. When you say, uh, you know, chikitsa is kit, but there is no other form. It doesn't mean desire to uh, treat or whatever, no, but that is its form. 
you know and uh, and then uh, uh, tij tij what is the word for the, how does a tij become if you put desiderative you know this word titiksha titiksha yes and titiksha is not desire for tij no titiksha is itself and also these, these with these three exceptions you know um and uh, all the other nouns are in the desiderative sense and then what so here he says yan eva hatva killing home killing all these pe- uh, people na jiji vishamah we would not desire to live you know and and he laments te atra avasthita pramukhe here they stand right facing us <laughs> as though they are hungry for our arrows we can't get away from them here they are looking at us expectantly even they too look lost so oh, krishna they just standing there doing nothing they are waiting for you to finish having your breakdown that's all <laughs> they are just standing there we can't get away from them you know so te avasthita pramukhe pramukhe means right in front of us dharta who are these sons of dhritarashtra here they are standing right there so i don't know which is better whether we should kill them or they should conquer us and kill us we i don't know but here these dhritarashtras uh, you know science the children who are standing there right in front of us waiting for the arrows to come they are not doing anything and they are standing in front of us so these uh, killing home we would not want to live that much i know i don't know if it's better for them to conquer us for us to be victorious but i know that if they die i don't want to live going back to the same old argument about my people and this dysfunctional love for a while he made sense but he is retreating back to this but he'll come out of it he's just a, a little confused our fellow and <laughs> and then he says you know he admits a few things he ha- takes a hard look at himself and he says you know why i don't feel good because if somebody had asked someone else you know why you know you don't feel good he says who can feel good look at this battle look at how much noise they are making and look at these people you know that is what they would have said who will feel good about a battle naturally i'll be upset and my children are you know in in the war so naturally i'll be worried about abhimanyu and uh, all these people so who can be happy in such a situation somebody with an average you know intelli- intellect buddhi here not intelligence but buddhi average buddhi and not given to introspection this is what they would think but arjuna is he, he is a very you know thinking person he is a very introspective person and he takes a hard and honest look at himself and he says my swabhava my nature may be satyam jnanam anantam <laughs> but right now it is what yeah what what, what is it yeah read dosha apahata yeah right now it is kda not satyam jnanam anantam yeah not satchidananda not sca it is kda karpanya dosha apahata means it is now apahata means hijacked yeah you know um, what is that it is uh, blighted by actually that's the correct word it has got the blight you know like how the crop all of them get blight like for you know too much uh, what is that cold or something they they get blight so now you know now by the by the cold winds of my miserliness you know the cold frost frosty winds of miserliness have blighted my nature and what is this miserliness what is miserliness has have to do with his condition yeah this is a very important question who is a miser if you don't have money and you don't give are you a miser if you don't have money and you don't give yeah, yeah. if you you know you don't have money and you spend a lot that that also is not a miser you know but if you have money and then don't give you know if you have money and you're just holding it holding it holding it 
for a better day for a rainy day for a worse day this is for retirement this is when i'm you know old and doddering this is when i can't take care of myself this is when i'm one foot is in the grave this is for then and then what happens you know the person dies away and then all the money goes to the brother in law he did not like this is what happens this is frequently that which happens they, people just hold much more than they ever can want and even you really you don't understand people don't understand that if you are supposed to live you will live yeah you, you you will be taken care of you don't understand that people don't not understanding that there is a hoarding tendency and here what is he hoarding you know his brain cells <laughs> Uh, because he's he he says my thinking is affected this is what karpanya dosha here means that my, i'm only seeing these options and the options are are you know are so thin that even the eye of a needle is bigger than the options that he is seeing yeah the options are very very slim that means his thinking is affected plaques of doubt and despair have grown around the brain and then he is not able to think this is the vedic definition of miserliness the one who has the capacity to think but does not think where where have we heard this brihadaranya kopanishad who tells this to who yagyavalkya na yagyavalkya no this time different yagyavalkya yes but who who does he t- tell to yagi valkya yes gargi he tells gargi he says bho gargi you know first gargi is the is sitting in the assembly she is the one who is testing all the people to see if they belong to the assembly gargi is a highly uh, you know acclaimed scholar and she was told by king janaka not sita's father but the upanishadic king janaka to form a coterie of scholars and so she had to decide who will be part of this assembly this august assembly and so she is testing yagyamalkya and yagyamalkya she asks a question kripanah kaha you know she was not talking of tatva bodha because tatva bodha is full of such questions <laughs> but <laughs> kripanah kaha no this is <laughs> she was testing him <laughs> so in this test what did she say she says who tell me who is akripana and what did he answer without batting an eyelid he says atmanam aviditva asman lokan praiti bhogargi sakripana the one who departs this world without knowing the truth of one's self without knowing one's swabhava is akripana and the same word swabhava he brings it here and he says my swabhava right now is overcome by miserliness that i'm only thinking of the, this is the only option see when all the options are not there in a situation that means the thinking has been affected because every situation if you're looking at it objectively should have at least one option and here the option the best option he was uh, able to come up with is to, that i'm going to the himalayas because i don't like this war that's not an option you're not a sadhu you cannot think like this right now and you cannot become a derelict of your own duties this is not good this is not shreyas this is not going to bring you closer to moksha or heaven whichever comes first whichever you want so you are not thinking properly and so he knows that he is not thinking properly and he admits it and he says wherever i go i'm hitting a brick wall i'm not able to see the way out and the only way i saw out that is also sounding very cheesy and even to myself i don't feel that it is it is an option really but i just that's the only option and that because it feels like it's an only option i know i'm not open to seeing something which i should be he says karpanya dosha apahatah i am blighted by this frosty winds of miserliness in thinking i'm not using my brain cells properly why because they are covered by grief and sorrow at at this dharma sankata at this you know feeling that i cannot be adharmic i cannot see past that so therefore this me who is this me dharma sammudha chetaha chetaha and karpanya dosha apahata swabhavah both of them are me 
and he, his first is I have explained the second word he uses for himself second compound is dharma sammodha chetaha so one whose chetas who is chetas is the heart is deluded because of dharma the delusion of uh, the, the the topic for the delusion in the heart is what is dharma what is a dharma it is a dharma to leave the war but how can it be dharma to fight your own elders there there must be something else i'm not seeing therefore prichami twa twam twam prichami who is prichami i am asking yeah, who is this i the one who is you know has paucity of thinking paucity of thinking because i'm not seeing the options and the paucity of thinking is because my thinking is overshadowed by this unacceptable fact that i have to kill the elders i cannot see past that so no other option is coming to me other than to leave somehow or the other and then who is this i dharma sammodha cheta the one who is honestly deluded by by the i'll take a couple of more minutes today because i want to at least uh, translate this so the one who is honestly in d- deluded sammodha in delusion in confusion about what is the correct thing to do what is dharma here where is the greater dharma where is the greater glory what is the correct thing to do i don't know and then therefore i ask and what do i ask yat shreyah syat nishchitam bruhi tatme what is uh, no, forget the war because this is now beyond the war because he recognizes in himself a paucity of thinking he recognizes himself a deep sorrow that he's going to explain in the next uh, uh, verse he recognizes and he owns up this sadness without guilt he owns it up without blame he takes responsibility for it without blame and most of the people here don't know the difference they feel like oh i shouldn't blame myself so i should be in denial that's not an option to take responsibility is to own it up and to be able to look at it objectively and say okay i think i have a problem here i have a problem i have paucity of thinking i'm not able to think clearly and then what else do i have a genuine doubt and confusion on the topic of what is correct what is the appropriate thing to do and therefore i ask you you know please teach me shishya steham i offer myself up to you as your student i apprentice you with you as your student please teach me shadhi shadhi means from shas to teach teach me and offering means prapannam i who am surrendering pra plus pat i am falling at your feet you know so i here and there is sometimes you know you see this wonderful picture in the bhagavad gita where he is kneeling down in front of bhagavan krishna in the middle surrounded by battle you know by the the warring people so he is you know kneeling down in front of bhagavan krishna and he says i surrender because i don't see a way out i'm locked in by my own thinking you know which is threadbare at this point and then i have lost sight of all options and i don't know what is the correct thing to do and i recognize this sorrow he's going to tell this tomorrow <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i recognize <laughs> i recognize this sorrow as centered on myself and i take responsibility for it and what is shreyas earlier also he used the word shreyas but there he says you know na etad vidmaha katarno gariya all this he used other words and shreyas he used in the sense of which is better which of the two is better you know shreyah bhoktum bhiksham it is better to lead a, it is exalted to lead a live a life of arms and that's where his confusion lies he thinks shreyas means a life of arms mm-hmm. yeah he doesn't think shreyas is what one has to gain through the knowledge and through the dismissal of the ignorance not through a life of arms mm-hmm. if you have the same agnyanam you will be fighting for another you know with another person for the arms that's what you will be doing yeah it's not going to go well and you will be trying to see what to do and how to get into trouble that's all will happen because you don't know what to do 
So here he is confusing Shreyas. He is confusing Moksha with Sanyasa. He is confusing the means with the end. And then he says, that's why he says, I don't know what is Shreyas anymore. I thought battle was Shreyas earlier. The Shreyas kept shifting. The definition of Shreyas. When I was a boy, all I wanted to do was be the best archer, Shreyas. Then when I was a young man, all I wanted to do was win Draupadi's hand. That was Shreyas. And then uh, after that, I wanted to just live a good life. Then these idiots came and, you know, then I thought I'll win this gambling, uh, you know, game. That is Shreyas. That was also not Shreyas. Then I thought I will outlast them in the, in the forest and come back and show them that is Shreyas. That is not Shreyas. Then I thought I'll win this war and gain Shreyas. That is also not Shreyas. So the shifting sands of Shreyas have left me in a, in a kind of a sinking feeling. I am in the quicksand of doubt, delusion and despair. I surrender to you. What is really Shreyas? What is this Shreyas? That which is the most, Shreyas means that which is the most exalted. That is what I want. I don't care about this war. I recognize in me an overachiever who has always wanted Shreyas and yet has carried this sorrow and I am not able to take out this sorrow and I know that this Shreyas is not in this war where all these people are going to be killed. How can it be Shreyas? And where gurus and elders are going to meet with their end, how is it Shreyas? Where all the children are going to become fatherless, the wives are going to become widows. How is this Shreyas? This is not Shreyas. And so therefore, what is Shreyas? I don't know. You know, I thought going somewhere and sitting in a cave is Shreyas. But maybe since all these were wrong, this that a good chance that that's also wrong. Of course, I won't find out till the 18th chapter, but never mind. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I can ask for it right now. And he says, Yad Shreyas Syat, that which is truly Shreyas, not this shifting Shreyas based on Raga Dvesha accomplishments. Nishchitam means truly Shreyas, you know, definitely. Nishchitam means that which doesn't shift. Tell me that. Bruhi. Bruhi means, you know, brew me a cup of Shreyas. Yeah, <laughs> tell me what is Shreyas. Yeah, bruhi me, you know, tell me. Tell me this Shreyas. And why should I tell you? Krishna can say, why? We get up and fight. And he says, I don't see any other way out. I am your student. Teach me, you know. Now Krishna has a choice. He can uh, repeat what he said. Kutastva kashmaladam idam. The, in 12 years you stayed in the forest. And you know, I came and visited you several times. You could have asked for the knowledge then. This is not the time for the knowledge. This is the time to fight, you know. Yeah, this is always a very interesting situation. <laughs> when the student comes and says, give me the knowledge. And then the teacher who was not a teacher till then, the teacher was just a person, you know. The, 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 the teacher is invoked here. And so whether the teacher will teach or not is a very intriguing situation. We will see what happens tomorrow. Obviously he teaches because we have 18 <laughs> chapters. But how and why and what happens we will see. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamada Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om